Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Join us for fresh perspectives by medical experts and advocates as we explore the spectrum of migraine and dig deeper into this complex disease. In this episode, Dr. Emanuel Schindler presents data from a pilot study that investigated the effects of the psychedelic drug psilocybin in 10 people with migraine. She discusses the results of a single microdose of the drug, side effects, safety information, and more. Here are my disclosures, um, uh, some of which are relevant uh, to to what I'll be talking about today. I wanted to first give some background on what psychedelics are. Um, Psychedelics are uh, compounds that bind the serotonin 2A receptor and have a, have a characteristic um, acute effects known as the psychedelic effects. There are two major classes. There are the indolamines that look more like serotonin and the phenethylamines that look more like dopamine. Um, in the indolamine class, there are the simpler tryptamine compounds that include um, uh, uh, psilocybin there, along with some other examples, DMT and 5-methoxy-DMT. The more complex ergolines include LSD, uh, the maker of of which is shown there, uh, Dr. Albert Hoffman. And um, on the phenethylamine side, the most commonly known one would be mescaline. And there are some other uh, other compounds that are used mostly in research uh, to study the serotonin 2A receptor. What you notice here is that you don't see MDMA or cannabis or ketamine on this list because those are pharmacologically very different compounds. They don't have as their primary or even any of their actions as serotonin 2A receptor agonists. So <clears throat> when I talk about psychedelics, I'm talking about these classic psychedelics, which are 2A receptor um, agonists. So looking at two of the more commonly known ones, psilocybin and LSD, if you put them up next to uh, conventional headache medications, you see that there's a lot of overlap. Uh, For psilocybin, uh, you have, um, um, which is an endolamine compound, melatonin and sumatriptan look almost identical with a couple of things added on or taken off. Melatonin is, of course, used as a preventive in certain headache conditions and sumatriptan as an abortive. Um, comparing LSD, you have um, uh, DHE, uh, which is used both acutely and as a transitional treatment, and methysergide, which was actually developed uh, with uh, uh, LSD, it was was developed off of LSD, uh, very effective uh, migraine preventive and also cluster headache preventive, but that was taken off the market for some side effects. And this is kind of a warning sign for for psychedelics because they're so chemically um, related. So it should not be a big surprise that psychedelics would have effects in headache disorders. And and in fact, for decades now, that has been reported. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the report is on a different topic and it's buried in there that, that the subject happened to have migraine and they found uh, um, relief for, for weeks or months. But most of these reports are on cluster headache. <clears throat> and that's perhaps in part because cluster headache has relatively few treatment options and patients are willing to do and take anything and everything to help, uh, to help with that condition. But the discovery of... Uh, the effects of psychedelics and cluster headache happened by accident, uh, where a patient in the late 90s found that uh, after um, after doing LSD one summer, that that kept his normal annual cycle at bay. <clears throat> so here's an example of what cluster headache patients have found uh, with with psilocybin. Here's a here's a headache diary of a cluster headache patient, and um, most patients will have an annual cycle lasting weeks to months. Um, And so this is one where on the x-axis, there are the days of his cycle. So his is about two months long. And then each attack, he shows as a box, the height of which is the duration. And on the the y-axis, there's the time of day and the color of which is the intensity of the headache. So the blues and greens are less severe and the reds and blacks are really severe. So as his typical cycle goes, it starts off with fewer attacks and they're less severe. And then they ramp up to very frequent attacks <clears throat> that are more severe, and then it tapers back down. So that's a typical cycle. This patient happened to have biannual cycle. So the next time he had a cycle, uh, here he is, 
He starts to have this cycle, the attacks ramp up, and he heard about using psilocybin mushrooms uh, to help with cluster headaches. So he tried a 0.5 grams of the mushroom. That's a pretty low dose, but immediately for a couple of days, he's got reduced uh, number and intensity of attacks. They ramp back up, and so he takes a whopping dose of psilocybin mushroom. He's probably talking to God at this point, and his cycle completely stops after a couple of days of some minor attacks. So psilocybin is rapidly um, metabolized. It's out of his blood by the following day. There's nothing else in headache medicine that you can take by mouth that's, that's metabolized out of your body um, that has such a, such a profound effect. So this is what makes psychedelics so exciting in headache disorders, that there's nothing like it. So what also has been found, or what has been reported from that patients using psilocybin mushrooms for, for cluster use very low doses, 0.1 grams up to you know, much higher doses. So there's a range. Not everybody needs to have the higher doses. And then there are also many reports of patients using sub-psychedelic doses of LSD in cluster headache as well. And again, most of, of these anecdotal data are in cluster, um, but we can take from that and we can apply it to other headache disorders as well. So since the, uh, there really wasn't a whole lot out there on migraine, perhaps just some, some case reports and um, patients telling us of their experiences, um, uh, the, um, I wanted to do an exploratory study in migraine. Really basic question, what happens after a single dose and compare it um, uh, to a placebo? <clears throat> so we enrolled patients who had migraine uh, with, with, with about two um, but two attacks a week or more up to age 65. And like with all psychedelic studies, we excluded patients who have significant medical disease, <clears throat> psychiatric disease um, and substance use history. And that's a little um, schedule of the study. It was very short term. We had patients keep a diary for about six weeks and then two weeks apart, they, they got two different drugs. Um, uh, between placebo and psilocybin, and we, and we compared the differences uh, in the diary. <clears throat> We're interested in those changes, such as frequency, uh, the uh, duration of attacks, and, others, and um, some other measures there. <clears throat> and then during the test days, when patients get the psilocybin, we looked at changes in vital signs, how they generally felt on the drug, and then there's a specialized scale, the five-dimensional altered states of consciousness scale that measures the psychedelic effects. And then of course, adverse events. So this, this study has been published, it was published last year, <clears throat> and there are data from 10 subjects who received, um, who received placebo in the first session, and then two weeks later got psilocybin. This dose of 0.143 mg per kg is roughly 10 milligrams of the pure psilocybin, which is a relatively low dose. Um, and uh, the final results included three males and seven females with an average age of about 40. And so these are some of the main findings. So after a single dose, compared to after a single dose of uh, placebo, a single dose of psilocybin reduced the um, migraine days per week by about half. There was a, a little dip um, after placebo, but there was a big dip uh, after psilocybin. The pain intensity of the migraine attack ranked from zero to three was also reduced after psilocybin, but not after placebo. The duration was also reduced, but because it was also reduced after placebo, it didn't, it didn't uh, meet significance because they both went down. But there was also a, a reduction in the duration of the migraine attacks that, that did happen over those next two weeks. <clears throat> there were also some other measures that were found to be, um, <clears throat> to be changed. The functional impairment during a migraine was also reduced by about half. Um, and then the number of abortive medications taken per week, or the number of days taking an abortive medication was also reduced by about half. And that makes sense if you have 50% you know, fewer migraines, then you're going to take those medications less. What was also interesting is that patients had more migraine free time. So the time to the next attack after the uh, dose of drug was given was pretty much doubled. It was um, it was about it was about two days for a, a placebo for the first migraine, and it was over five for psilocybin. This missed significance, but the time to the second migraine um, that was significantly different between psilocybin and a, a placebo. And um, 
some of the patients in the study didn't have a single migraine in those two weeks. So we just called their next migraine day 15. So this is actually, so this is this sort of uh, didn't quite measure when their next migraine could have been, which may have been a month later. There were some patients who had a, a long-term relief. I told you that I, uh, during the test days, we kept the five dimensional altered states of consciousness scale, which is a measure of the psychedelic effect. And there was um, um, some, that pa when patients got, got the placebo, there was a mild, uh, there was a, a very low, um, a low rating. And there was of course a higher rating um, when patients got psilocybin. When you plot the percent total score, so out of a hundred to the percent reduction in, in migraine days per week, um, that's what's shown here, all, all these, um, uh, each, each dot here is, is one patient there was no correlation. So if it was highly correlated, the dots would all be very close together right on top of the line, but they're all spread out. Plus, the other thing that's interesting here is that if you use the line as kind of a, a guide, even though it's not significant, it almost looks like those people who had a lower psychedelic experience had a greater reduction in their, in their migraine burden, which was interesting. In psychedelic research on mental health, on the mental health side, it's the opposite. The bigger experience you have during drug dosing, the uh, the better the outcome. But for uh, but for migraine, there it it didn't correlate at all. And that's similar to what cluster headache patients have been saying that they don't have to take a high dose; they can get the same effect out of a low dose that has minimal or even no psychedelic effects at all. Um, there were some side effects too, um, to taking psilocybin, even this low dose, uh, lightheadedness and nausea and anxiety were two of the, were, were, were some of the more common ones during the test sessions. These were all very short lived and they resolved by themselves. We didn't have to give any medications or anything. The day following, um, the drug administration, a lot of people got kind of general kind of, um, kind of hangover headaches. And then people, these were patients who had migraines. So some of them did have migraines also the following day, um, but that's not too surprising. Uh, I get asked a lot, uh, don't psychedelics cause headaches? Well, yes, they can cause one headache, but it's worth it if it ends up turning off your headaches for weeks or months uh, down the road. So I say, yes, they can cause a headache, but they can actually treat a headache disorder. So the conclusions that can be made from this study, keeping in mind that this is a very preliminary study, only 10 patients, the total in the final analysis. And then this is just after a single dose, um, looking over a two week period. So it's a very short term study. But in that period, we saw that migraine burden, several measures of, of migraine burden was reduced in that two week period. It delays the time to the next migraine, uh, as so more migraine free time and the clinical effects appear to be independent from the acute psychedelic effects. And this is more relevant for psychedelic research in general, in terms of, do you need to have the strong psychedelic effects in order to have, uh, to have therapeutic benefit and for, for headache disorders, at least it doesn't appear to be necessary. Uh, we demonstrated safety when we controlled for, uh, for, for the types of patients we were recruiting for um, and making sure that, that, uh, that uh, patients, um, <clears throat> uh, like for instance, one of our other safety uh, protocols that patients can't drive themselves home at the end of the test day. So with all those safety protocols in place, there were no, um, no unexpected or serious side effects. Um, but this study is limited, as I mentioned, 10 patients, only two weeks, um, and more research is going to be required. There are some strengths to the studies, though. It was a controlled study. We had both male and female subjects, a wide age range from the 20s up to the 60s, and we demonstrated safety. But the sample was small. All subjects happened to be Caucasian. Um, and um, <clears throat> there were about, about half the patients were chronic, half were episodic. So this does not represent the disease population in general, because that's, that's not uh, where the ratio no normally is. Um, you only gave psilocybin once, and there was only one dose that we were studying. So that's very, uh, very limiting. And we only looked out for a couple of weeks. There's also a high expectation for 
for psilocybin to work. There's a lot of media uh, coverage out there about psychedelics treating everything and fixing everything. So people have very high expectations. So that factors in as well. So in future studies, we need larger samples, different doses, looking at over the long term, the idea of having to having to repeat the doses that's a certain interval um, that, that has to be studied as well, and all these other factors. On, on the right, I list all the active headache uh, trials that are going on um, or that have completed. Uh, the one I just mentioned is that I just talked about is the second one. Um, and then, so there are, there are other groups that are also studying uh, psychedelics in, um, in headache disorders. So with that, I thank you for your attention and I look forward to answering questions later. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.